My name is Peter Flint, and I'm the owner-operator of Pizza Produce Farm in Westtown, PA. And we have 200 acres. The biggest thing we grow is sweet corn. That's what we're really known for. And uh, but we do tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, cantaloupes, watermelons, flowers, um, corn, soybeans, hay. We have a flour mill. We grind uh, grind our wheat and make uh, make flour. Um, strawberries, which we're picking now, and uh, yeah, we it grows around here, and we can sell it. We'll, we'll do it. <laughs> when I was 11 years old, we moved out of a neighborhood and moved next to a dairy farm. And I went up and started working on the dairy farm and really just, well, I was 12 and they put me on a big tractor. <laughs> that was the end of it. I, I was going to be a farmer. And when I graduated from high school, I told my parents, you know, I wanted to work on the farm and they said, well, you have to go to college. And I said, I don't want to go to college. I want to be a farmer. And they're like, you can do both. So I went to Michigan State and I have a BS degree in dairy science and animal husbandry. And now I'm a vegetable farmer. Ah, what are high tunnels? We're standing in one. This is um, this is a hay grove high tunnel, which is one of a variety of types of high tunnels. It's built to be um, to take up a lot of a lot of area for not that much money. It was the idea of this, so it's not strong enough to handle the snow. Uh, we have to take the plastic off in the winter time. But by definition, I think a high tunnel is any kind of greenhouse looking structure with plastic on it that doesn't have um, heat necessarily. Um, some guys do put heat in them now, but generally you plant your plants in the soil. Like here, this is uh, plastic mulch over top of the, the soil, and then we have drip irrigation under it. And um, so basically we're protecting the, the tomatoes from the rain. And, um, and then the plastic is a uh, light diffusing plastic. Some of the, the biggest advantages of high tunnels is for small farmers who don't have a lot of land. So this is this enables them to make a living on, you know, if they only have 10 acres or five acres, they can produce enough income in one of these high tunnels to support their family. It's enabled a lot of people to get into agriculture that n n normally couldn't couldn't support themselves on a few acres. This allows farmers to do more direct marketing where they can they can grow and sell in their, their own neighborhood. And they can be any size. Generally in production agriculture, they're much bigger than a greenhouse. Um, and, and they use natural ventilation as opposed to um, mechanical. There's no fans in here. We can take these sides and they're kind of laced on like a shoe. And so when it gets really hot, we push the sides up and um, open the doors. And when it gets really cold, we can pull all that stuff shut um, to, to warm it up in here. This is our, our biggest one, the Hay Grove High Tunnel. And um, it's a little bit over an acre. And then we have one smaller one, which is 32 by 100. And, um, that's kind of, we do a lot of experimental stuff in that one. Uh, and uh, That's kind of high tunnel for fun. This is high tunnel to pay the bills. To, to get started in here, we, um, we start seeds in the greenhouse, our tomatoes. We start um, usually around Valentine's Day, February, middle of February, we start the seeds. And then when the plants are uh, about eight weeks old, um, we try to get them planted in here. Sometimes it's, you know, we try to plant the middle of April in here and the plants are up, you know, about this big. And um, and then we put the row cover over them to protect from frost and, and that helps warm it up in addition to this. And I've tried other things. Uh, one year I, I rented a uh, hydronic ground heater to try to warm the soil up and uh, which was basically a an oil furnace on wheels and it had 3,000 feet of, looked like garden hose that it ran hot water through and we laid it on both sides of the tomatoes. And uh, we got our tomatoes about two weeks earlier than uh, 
we would have by warming the soil up. But it cost me five thousand dollars to rent the thing, so it kind of balances each other out. Um, but we'll start picking in here um, the beginning of July, picking tomatoes. Um, and the other advantage in here is that these we'll be able to harvest these tomatoes right up to October. Um, in the field, you never have that long of a harvest window. If we can keep the nutrients to them and keep them healthy, uh, we can keep picking tomatoes. Um, you don't pick, you know, after the initial slug, you pick less, but uh, we, we have the upper three bays, um, we'll probably plant in another two weeks. Uh, we'll plant tomatoes, maybe another week, we'll plant tomatoes in there. So they'll be, you know, a bigger slug later in the season. But, you know, we, we usually, these plants are still productive at the end of October when we, uh, when we take the plastic off. Uh, it's amazing how long things last in here. A lot of people think high tunnels, they, you know, they call it season extension. And it does help somewhat with the early and late season, but not as much as you would think because it can frost in here. Um, where we have to put, we put row cover, uh, floating row cover over the tomatoes in the early spring to protect them from frost. The same as we do in the field. So these don't really help you protect from Frost, but they do heat, heat things up much quicker. As soon as the sun comes out, they're really warm in here. You know, I said you get three to four times the yield of these, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. They're a lot of work. Since we are we are focused on retail agriculture, we try not to wholesale. Um, so we pick them here and we take them right to the store and uh, and sell them. So they're not you know not boxed or you know we put them in black crates. And, and take them down there. We can grow some varieties. Um, Fabulous is one that we've been growing for years, which is kind of a, it's a real sweet tomato and it's um, um, soft and not a good, not a good uh, commercial boxing tomato, but it's a great retail tomato. And so we can grow that here and retail it um, because we don't have to box it. We just, we got to get over the hill, which can be a challenge. <laughs> We've had a few accidents, <laughs> but uh, we're, you know, whole skid of slid slides off the truck, but uh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, they don't go far. They go, you know, 2,000 feet to the store. And uh, they are a little bit of a challenge to get out of here. We have to carry them. This high tunnel is 300 feet long and um, there's no good way to, to, to get across it. So we carry them in and out. That is a challenge that everybody's trying to figure out. Um, you know, we probably get picked twice as many tomatoes as we do in the field, and then 90% of what we pick is a number one perfect tomato, where in the field it's probably 50%. So I feel like we get four times the number of number one fruit in the high tunnels we do in the field. I mean, that's huge. We make more money on this one acre than we do on 50 acres of sweet corn, which is unbelievable. It, it just blows me away how productive this this is. Last year our tomatoes, uh, are, we always grow a little bit in the field and they were, by the middle of August, they were, you know, there was so much rain last summer that they just all died and this thing just kept on going. It's like the Energizer bunny of tomatoes. <laughs>